Hello, everybody. Welcome to the section on updating beliefs with Bayesian inference. And in this video, we'll focus on understanding Bayes' theorem. I want to cover the actual Bayes' theorem itself and go over the equation. And I will apply Bayes' theorem to a classic example. And then finally, I'll give a summary of probabilities calculations so that you can see how the calculations are done. So let's get started. Now, Bayes' theorem deals with calculating a probability. And you can think of this as a probability of an event. And the component parts that go into Bayes' theorem, there are also probabilities as well. The first part deals with the prior assumptions, the prior probability. So you may have some information or knowledge. You've got some assumptions. This is all captured in the prior beliefs, represented as the prior probability, P of A. And that's one part of it that goes into Bayes' theorem. Another part is the likelihood the probability of B given A. This is the likelihood, the plausibility that our data is observed given our prior beliefs, our prior probability. From this, you're also going to bring to bear some evidence, um, your data. That's the probability of B. And then with all of this, you're going to calculate the posterior probability. The posterior is the result of the Bayesian analysis, given your data and model. So you're actually going to get a result as a probability. This can cycle through again as you update your beliefs. So say you calculate your prior probability at one moment in time. If you get new information later on, you would update those probabilities and then your posterior will also change. You're going to get a different result as a result. Now I'm going to take Bayes' theorem and apply it to a classic example. And you'll see with hard numbers what this looks like. This might be a slow, drawn-out process, but I think it will better highlight what we're talking about in terms of probabilities and how to think about it and apply it. So 1% of women at age 40 who participate in a screening have breast cancer. And 80% of women with breast cancer get positive mammographies. So they get a positive result from their mammography test. 9.6% of women without breast cancer also get positive mammography results. So a 40-year-old woman participates in a routine screening and gets a positive mammography result. What's the probability that she has breast cancer? So we're going to work with a population of 10,000 women. So out of 10,000 women who go to a routine screening, 1% will have breast cancer. So we can calculate this. So 1% of 10,000 women is 100 women with cancer. So they've just gone to a routine screening. And here it's important to note that this prior probability that a woman has breast cancer is 1%. This is even before getting a positive result from a mammography test. So we're going to set our probability of A is equal to 0.01. And again, I've restated the, the question and I show you Bayes' theorem so that that can give you an idea of what we're looking at. Now, we're also told that 80% of women who have breast cancer have positive mammography tests. So they've tested positive. So let's calculate the true positive rate. So we just need to multiply 0 0.80 times 100. That gives us 80 women with a true positive result. So 80 out of 100 women with cancer get a correct mammogram test result. We can deduce that 20% of women do not. They actually have breast cancer, but they get a false test result. So 20 women have a false negative. Now, if we know that 1% of 
of women have breast cancer, we know that 99% of women do not. So we know that 9,900 women do not have breast cancer in our sample of 10,000. Another piece of information that we're given is that 9.6% of women without breast cancer get a positive mammography result. So let's take a look at that. The actual hard number is 950.4. So 950.4 women have a false positive result. We also can deduce from this that 90.4% of women without breast cancer get a negative mammogram test, a negative result. So what is the true negative here? We multiply 0.904 times 9,900 and we get 8,949.6. So that's the actual hard number of women with a true negative result. So we also want to calculate the probability of all the positives. Okay, so this is the evidence or data that we have. Just what is the actual total of all our true positive and our false positives? So just from the mammogram tests, who all tests positives? And it's 1,030.4. In terms of proportion of positives, we're looking at a total of 10,000 here. That's about 10%, 0.103. Recall how many women have true positive results. It was 80, and the proportion itself was 0.80. So if we were to calculate the true positive over all of the positives, the true positives and the false positives, we're going to get the 0.07 Seven, six. That's the posterior probability. Now, I'm going to go down below here and show you in a more simpler format the calculations. So again, we're asking the question, what's the probability that a woman has breast cancer given that she's tested positive for a mammogram test? We know the probability of A. That's our prior probability is 0.01. We also know that the probability of B given A, that's the information that 80% of women who have breast cancer have positive mammogram tests. We're going to plug in the numerator here, 0.80 times 0.01. Now for the denominator, we need to look at the evidence of those who test positive, right? So all of that comes up to 0 0.10304. So that's in the denominator. We then are able to calculate the posterior probability, the probability of A given B, which is Bayes' theorem. And that is 0 0.0776. So the probability that a woman has breast cancer given a positive mammogram result is 7.8%. So that's our answer. So there you have it. 